Hello, in this Kotlin programming video, I am going to show you arrays. So arrays are a collection of similar data types, you know, for example, you know, strings, integers, etc. And they're pretty much the same as they are in most other programming languages. And I also recommend checking out the variable video and the data type video before you have a look at this. Okay, so if we create a regular variable var I, for example, and I'll sign a value of 8. And I can obviously print this out. So print ln. And it prints out. It. Okay, that's all well and good. But imagine if we have loads of values and they're all sort of linked. Maybe they're a set of high scores, five high scores, for example. So instead of saying a you know, var score 1, var score 2, what we could do is create a variable called scores, for example, say equals, and then do array of, and we could specify five values, for example. So if I say one, three, five, 78, and three. Okay, so if we want to print it out, we do print ln, if we put scores in like so, let's see what we get. So I think it doesn't quite get it. So this basically just gets a reference to the memory location to get an individual value. If we put square brackets, put the index. So if we put zero, this will get the first value. Remember, computer start at zero. So it gets zero, or it gets one. If I say one, it should get the second index, which is this one right here. And so you'll get the value free. Okay, so it printed out that value. You can do the same for pretty much any type of data type. If you are using a specific data type or you want to mention a specific data type, so you'll do it. So if I do the var names, for example, equals array of, and maybe we want to assign names. So I want to say Bob. Batman, Rahan, Pizza, and I'll say mashed potato. Mashed potato. So some epic names. And if we not only print out the score, we print out the names as well, like so. Let's see what we get. So Batman has a score of three. You can specify the data type just, just so it's made clearer. Like, so you put angle brackets, you can specify for a number, for a string, whatever it is. You can use other methods for integer arrays, also int array of, that is specific to not integers there. But I'm happy with the array of method. I think that's really all you need so I've shown you how to actually get specific values like so. There are some other ways of getting a value. So for example, if I copy this, so instead of doing square brackets, which is a common way in most languages, you can do dot get, and then if I say one, dot get, and I'll run it. As you can see, it's printed out the same. So this right here, using a method and specifying the index compared to using square brackets, produces the same result. So just depending on which one you prefer, if you come from another language, you'll probably prefer this one because it's a seem, you know, familiar. If you're not coming from another language, this is a bit more obvious because there's a, there's a function and there's a particular word there. And if you want to set a value, similar principle. You could do, you know, let's say scores, I'll, I'll stick with you know, the index one. So if I say one equals eight, and it, I'll do print ln scores one. Run that, see what we get. So as you can see, it's printed out eight once it's been modified. So that other eight is coming from here, so we can get rid of that. We'll get rid of this one. That's useless to us now. 
Okay, so another way to set a variable is to do false dot set. And first of all, you need to specify the index. So one, now specify the value, let's say 67. And we could print it out however we want. We could use the dot get method. We could just use square brackets. I use square brackets because that's what I was first doing in programming languages like C++, which was the second language I ever learned. And if I run it now, as you can see, it's got the value 67 assigned to it at this point. So to set value to an array for a specific index, you can use any one of these methods. For getting, you can use any one of these methods. And this is how you create an array of sort of common values that have to be the same data type. That's just something to bear in mind. What you can also do, if you don't have the values you know, specifically, you could just create an array of a certain size. So that way the compiler knows it's you know, of size five or 10 and it reserves that much memory. That's the, that's the only reason the compiler needs to know that it's of size 10. So it says, you know, if each value is, an, I don't know, a byte, so it's eight bits, you know, and it's just in the arrays of size five, eight times five is 40. So it needs to reserve 40 bits in memory. That's the only reason it needs to know, nothing more than that. But you can specify the size from the start, so therefore you don't have to assign the value. I'm gonna provide a link to you know more information about arrays, which includes creating an empty array but with a you know specific size. And I want you to experiment with that. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.